I have been binge watching a ton of iceberg image videos. If you don't know, iceberg images are images where it lists well-known facts about a topic first and ends by listing very obscure facts about it. The iceberg image I'm exploiting is from the user Alfium. Now before I start, the creator said most of these are real, but some are bullcrap, try to list the fake ones, so keep that in mind. First, we'll start at the Earth level, with mostly things that the average person knows about. Science is real! The first two on the image are ones everyone should know. The ninth planet, which is just talking about Pluto, and the Big Bang, which is the event where the universe was created. Next, there's Tabby Star, which is a star in the constellation Cygnus, approximately 1,500 light years from Earth. Scientists were interested in it because its brightness decreased by 22%, and they tried to figure out why. It seems too obscure for me to be at the top of the list. Afterwards, there's a Pioneer plaque, which was a plaque placed on board the 1972 Pioneer 10 and the 1973 Pioneer 11 spacecraft. It shows a naked man and a woman, and a picture of the solar system with the spacecraft launching from Earth. Then there's a Tesla Roadster, which refers to the car that was used to test the lift capacity of the Falcon Heavy. One of Elon Musk's Twitter followers suggested he use a Tesla Model S for the test, and so he used his personal Midnight Cherry Tesla Roadster for it. After that, there's Uranus Sideways, which refers to how the axis tilt of Uranus is 98 degrees compared to Jupiter's 3 and Earth's 24 degrees, making it sideways. It is thought that this is because Uranus was hit by multiple celestial objects before it formed its moons. Following that is Golden Records, which were records sent on the 1977 Voyager spacecraft. These contained images like a baby breastfeeding and DNA, songs like Brandenburg Concerto No. 2, and Pygmy Girl's initiation song, and sounds from volcanoes and chimpanzees. Then there's string theory, which is a very complicated concept in quantum mechanics. If you want to learn about it from someone who actually knows what they're talking about, I linked a video by Kutzkazart that explains it in the description. In short, it is a theory where particles like electrons are represented as lines called strings, and their vibration determines their properties. Lastly, there's a wow signal. The wow signal was a strong radio signal received on August 15, 1977 that was so strong that the astronomer that found it wrote wow on the sheet displaying it, hence the name. People originally thought it was aliens, but now it's thought that it was a hydrogen cloud touching a comet. With the first level done, it's time to blast off into level 2, the inner solar system. From the Big Bang to DNA. First, we have Trine was captured, which is talking about how scientists think Neptune's moon Triton was an object in the Kuiper belt, that was captured by Neptune's gravity. They mainly think this because it orbits in the opposite direction of its planet's rotation. Following that is heat death of the universe, which is a well-known theory of how the universe will end. It is explained in another Kutzkazart video that you should watch. However, the basic idea is that eventually nebulas will stop producing stars, and after that all stars will eventually collapse to form black holes, leaving a cold, empty universe. Afterwards is Nibiru, which is the idea that at some point in the 21st century, a planetary object will crash into Earth, which has been proven wrong several times by the supposed date of the crash passing. The Wikipedia page for Nibiru has this funny line. She states that she was chosen to warn mankind that an object would sweep through the inner solar system in May 2003, though the date was later postponed. Next is Plan 9, which is an operating system built in Bell Labs in the mid-1980s. Many features, such as a Unicode character encoding and the 9P file system, were implemented in other systems. After that is Nude Sent to Aliens, which is the first bullcrap one. The one thing I could find about that was the Pioneer plaque, but that was already talked about. Then there's the Arecibo message, which is a message designed by Frank Drake that was beamed into space. The message is in binary, and when you convert it to an image, it shows pictures of man, DNA, and the Arecibo telescope, among other things. After that is COBE, or the Cosmic Background Explorer, which is a satellite that operated from 1983 to 1993. COBE's measurements provide two pieces of evidence that supported the Big Bang Theory of the Universe. Afterwards is gravitational lensing, which is a phenomenon that helps us find planets through light being bent by the gravitational pull of a star or galaxy, which is called a lens, making it easier for us to see it. The lens can be out of focus sometimes, making it look like there are more planets than there actually are. Then there's the Fermi Paradox, which goes like this. There are billions of stars like our sun in the Milky Way, and some of them probably have Earth-like planets with intelligent life on them. Many of these planets are billions of years older than Earth, and probably developed interstellar travel, so why have we never seen any aliens? Next is Earth does not orbit the sun, which is about how technically the Earth doesn't orbit the sun, but instead the center of mass in the solar system, which is near the sun. 
This fact is a little misleading, because without looking it up, it seems like it's saying the sun orbits the Earth or something like that. Then there's Haumea, which is a dwarf planet that's the third largest trans-Neptunian, or past Neptune's orbit, planet. It's interesting because it has rings like Saturn. Lastly, we have Venus upside down, which is similar to Uranus sideways fact, but instead of a tilt of 98 degrees, Venus has a tilt of 177.3 degrees, making it upside down. This means that Venus is the only planet that rotates clockwise. Now that we've gotten through the inner solar system, let's go into the outer solar system. First, we have moon destroyed to form rings of Saturn, which is about how a moon the size of Titan spiraled into Saturn and turned into Saturn's rings. Scientists believe the ice of the planet got turned into the rings, but the rocky core wasn't destroyed, so it left a ring of only ice. Then, we have the Big Crunch, which is a theory that the universe will eventually stop expanding and start shrinking. If this happens, eventually supermassive black holes will form everywhere and devour everything and themselves. What a way to go out. Next, we have WMAP, which was a probe that measured temperatures in the cosmic microwave background or radiant heat remaining from the Big Bang. This gave us some evidence towards the theory of dark energy. Afterwards, we have Little Green Men, which is just about aliens, bringing the bullcrab counter to two. After that, we have Tenth Planet, which is about Eris, which is the second largest dwarf planet behind Pluto. Since it also orbits the Sun, some call it the Tenth Planet in the solar system. Following that, we have Face on Mars, discovered by Viking. In 1976, the Viking 1 spacecraft took a picture of a rock on Mars that kind of looked like a face, which caused conspiracy theorists to say that there's life on Mars. A later photo from 1998 showed that it didn't even look like a face when the quality was increased. Then we have Pluto Charon Double Planet System, which is talking about how some scientists classify both Pluto and Charon as planets, as they satisfy some criteria for being a planet such as the ratio of their mass being closer to one than other planets in their moons, and the point that Charon rotates around is not in Pluto. Afterwards, we have Black Dwarf, which is a theoretical white dwarf that no longer emits significant light or heat. There are no black dwarves in the universe yet, as the time needed for it to become a black dwarf is longer than the current age of the universe. Next, we have Nemesis, which is an incredibly cool-sounding theory that theorizes that there's a red dwarf that directs celestial objects towards Earth that can cause mass extinctions when it gets closer to Earth. This stems from the fact that there are more frequent mass extinctions every 27 million years. Then, we have the Big Bounce, which is related to the Big Crunch theory from earlier. That states that after the Big Crunch happens, the universe has a new Big Bang and starts expanding again, leading to an infinite cycle of expanding and shrinking. Lastly, we have Hitting golf balls on the moon, which is a reference to when astronaut Alan Shepard hit a golf ball on the moon. While they didn't measure the distance the ball traveled, scientists calculated that it went about two miles due to the lower gravity. Now we're out of the solar system and traveling through the Kuiper Belt. Watch out for asteroids! From evolution to the Milky Way. First, we have Don't Look at the Moon, or third bullcrap one, which is a reference to the horror web series Local 58. Then, we have Cheriklo, which is a small celestial body in the outer solar system that, like Haumea, has rings. Scientists discovered it in 2014. Afterwards, we have my personal favorite, Penis in the Moon Museum, which refers to when a ceramic wafer was dropped on the moon during the Apollo 12 mission, with art from prominent artists including a penis drawing by THE Andy Warhol. One of the artists for the Moon Museum is quoted as saying, he was being the terrible bad boy. After that, we have Martian Spoon, which is a rock on Mars that's shaped like a spoon. Following that, we have Aliens Under the Crust of Europa, which refers to the fact that scientists think there could be higher alien life forms under the surface of Europa, since there is salt water and possibly hydrothermal vents heating it. This one's a little misleading, as it sounds like we know there's aliens under Europa, which we don't. Next, we have Center of the Universe, which is our fourth bullcrap one. As it says on Wikipedia, according to the standard cosmological theories on the shape of the universe, it has no center. Then we have Age of Enceladus, which is talking about how Saturn's moon Enceladus's ocean is 1 billion years old, which is the ideal age for life to form. However, scientists got the 1 billion age through simulation, so they are not sure if it's correct. Lastly, you have Human Ashes Left the Solar System, which is referring to the remains of Clyde Tomba, the man who discovered Pluto in 1930, which was shot into space and recently left the solar system. Luckily, we got through the Kuiper Belt, now to explore the rest of the Milky Way. First, we have Vacuum Decay, which is a very scary and very complicated way the universe could end. 
Once again, there's a Kutzkazart video on this. In short, everything in the universe wants to be at the lowest energy level, and when things called quantum fields that define the way things work in the universe are at the state of low energy, it's called a vacuum. All of the quantum fields are in a vacuum state, except for one which may be pretending to be in a vacuum state. And if it goes into a vacuum state, the energy released will destroy the universe. Following that, we have Big Bang caused by quantum tunneling. Quantum tunneling is a non-zero chance that a particle can go through some kind of barrier such as a wall. The scientist named Alexander Vlenkin calculated that quantum tunneling could have caused the Big Bang for some sciencey reason that I can't wrap my head around. Then we have strange matter, which is a form of quark matter or matter made entirely of quarks that contains a kind of quark called strange quarks. One theory about it that's related to the vacuum decay theory is that all matter is pretending to be in a vacuum state when actually strange matter is a vacuum state and that could also destroy the universe that gets to that state. Next we have CMD cold spot which is a very large part of the universe that is 459 degrees Fahrenheit or 273 degrees Celsius colder than the surrounding area. Scientists say that there's about a 1% chance that this happened randomly, or it could also be because of a super void or a large area with few or no galaxies nearby. Afterwards, we have curvature of the universe, which is a theory that the universe is curved, Everyone thought the universe was flat until 2018, where data from the Planck satellite hinted at a curved universe. Some t scientists say this proves that the universe is curved, while some won't believe it until there's more data backing it. Following that, we have white holes, which are the theoretical opposite of black holes, where nothing can enter the white hole, but things can come out of it. Scientists are not sure if they actually exist, or how they would form if they do, but for now it's an interesting theory. Lastly, we have pocket universes. The Wikipedia page, which I'll link in the description, is not particularly clear on what they are, but my best guess is it has something to do with there being a multiverse. If you guys can figure out what it means, put it in the comments. Well, we've seen one galaxy, so now it's time to visit the rest in the supercluster. First, we have iron stars, which are a hypothetical type of star that could exist in 10 to the 1,500 years, where light nuclei slowly turn to iron nuclei. This would turn the star into a giant sphere made of iron. Next, we have CMB message, which is about when a pair of scientists said that if God existed, he would leave a message in a cosmic microwave background or the background radiation of the universe. And so they tried to find that message. Unfortunately, they didn't find any message. After that, we have origin of Europa's pink-brown discoloration, which may be bullcrap as I couldn't find anything that talked about it, but it seems too mundane to be made up, so maybe it's real? Following that, we have viewing of exoplanets via gravitational lensing of the sun, which is about how we're using the sun as a gravitational lens to find exoplanets because the resolution is much better than using other gravitational lenses. Then we have copy of the observable universe within 10 to the 10 to the 115 meters, which is another bullcrap one. Unless we live in Mario 64, there are no copies of the universe no matter how far you go. Lastly, we have exact distance of wow signal unknown which is referring to how the device that measured the wow signal had two feed horns which it got the data from, facing in opposite directions. We know one of the horns received the wow signal, and one didn't receive it, but we don't know which is which, so we don't know what direction the signal came from. Now, for our final part of the trip, we'll be checking out the rest of the observable universe. First, we have folded dimensions at one millimeter, which is not only bullcrap, but sounds like something from a sci-fi movie. We had to go in and assess the folded dimensions at one millimeter. English, please! Then we have Boltzmann brains, which is the hypothesis stating that it's more likely for a brain to form in a void with memories of existing in our universe than it is for the universe to have formed like it did. And finally, we have wow signal origin may be moving towards Earth, which is our final bullcrap one and like don't look at the moon is just there to scare you. So, that was the universe iceberg. Compared to some other iceberg charts, this actually has a lot of good ones, even at the deepest levels. I hope you enjoy the deep dive into our universe. Goodbye!